Hi, it's James from Active, and I know it's been a long time since our last video, and thanks everyone for their patience. Um, and we wanted to update everybody today on the results of our testing on the VE52 returns. Now, we've sold hundreds of thousands of these units in different markets in the world, including Canada and Asia, but we've never sold it in the US and we've never sold it to the specific customer base that most of you belong to. So we wanted to really dig deep and understand why we were getting higher than normal return rates or less than satisfied customers on the product. And so we took a really deep dive into the product, um, into the causes of the returns, into some of the customer complaints. And we want to share all of the findings with you here today. So a quick note about how we analyze and how we've kind of uh, done these returns. Now, we obviously collect a lot of data from our call center and from online about what customers complain about or what problems they're having. And I think typically people just, um, it's just a line item in people's budgets and they allocate for returns. But what we wanted to do was really, again, understand what's going on with the product, how customers are using the product, and then of course, do what we can to improve the product and inform our next generation of development. Um, so what we did is we collected a lot of the returns and analyzed them here in our facility in Toronto, uh, whether it was for actual defectives or analyzing different components to see what went wrong. Um, and the interesting thing is about half of the units that came back actually had nothing wrong with them at all. Um, and so, of course, that's always a case of maybe customers not being uh, happy with their product or not satisfied with what they purchased and that's you know that's just part of the game uh, in any case i think we did however find a lot of interesting insights in terms of the product and how it's being used and uh, we're we're going to share with you how we've improved the product and how it's again informed our next generation of product so in the spirit of being a bit more transparent and Kind of letting everybody in into the product development and improvement process we're going to talk about the top causes for complaints and returns that we found both from our product audit and from kind of noise online and obviously we've had issues around the power switch it's an led power switch that we had in the original version we had oil leaking from the pump we had uh, the pump end plate cracking uh, and or the piston gases cracking which again would cause leaks uh, we've had a lot of issues around the pump cycling or surging um, and then we've had even some issues around a faulty GFCI. Now taken together um, or each one taken independently I should say they are not a great cause of concern and overall our return rates are still very much in line with what the industry would have or better. Um, but again we wanted to take a look at the call it the top complaints and see what we could learn about it and share that information with you guys. So one of the features on the original V52 was a switch that turned the unit on or off and it had an LED light incorporated into the switch. From a product development point of view, I think it's a neat function to have, although in reality, it's questionable what the actual value of that LED switch is to a customer that's typically using their product outside, you know, in sunshine or whatnot. Um, so this is a great example of additional complexity that was not truly required or was of questionable, be questionable benefit to the consumer. So an LED switch by definition is more complicated than a basic switch. So we decided to switch that out. Even then though, we had another issue where the alignment of the switch or of the improved switch that we used wasn't quite perfect all the time. And you got instances where customers were turning on the switch and it wasn't properly activating. So that required us to retool, not only the position of the switch, but how it was housed within the body. And through our testing, we found that the new switch is going to be very robust and effective and uh, should cause significantly less problems than we had before. One of the challenges we had early on was customers complaining about oil leaks coming from the pump. Now, typically that's caused by 
remaining shards of the aluminum kind of um, machining process that haven't been properly cleaned out of the pump before the pump is assembled. And these shards can kind of cause um, ruptures in the seals and whatnot, causing the oil to leak. Um, that process has improved over time, but we still have gone back to the factory and asked them to improve both the cleaning process, so making sure that there were no shards remaining in the pump before it went into assembly, and also just the entire machining, um, I guess you could say precision, so that we could minimize the amount of shards to begin with. And what we found today is we have very, very minimal instances of any oil leaking, so we think we've addressed this issue. So another issue that we discovered were issues around the pump itself cracking. Now, there are many reasons why a pump could potentially crack, but from a function point of view, what we discovered was it was related to the auto stop start function. So when you use your pressure washer typically, and most pressure washers on the market would have this feature, when you release the trigger um, shortly thereafter, the, you'll hear the motor and pump basically shut down. And then when you press the trigger on again, then you'll hear the pump and motor start up. The, the actual functionality of that is driven by a basically an auto cutoff valve, which when it senses an amount of pressure in the pump, basically activates and activates a micro switch to shut off the whole system. So what we discovered was our old uh, auto cutoff valve design um, was basically failing over time, causing a very big increase in pressure, uh, pressure within the pump before the switch would activate, therefore shutting down the system. A um, whole host of reasons due, due to material and design. And so we went with a newly designed, what we call a two-stage uh, auto cutoff valve that is much less sensitive to material tolerances um, and the actual spring inside the valve that controlled this function. And uh, it will more consistently and easily limit the internal pressure of the pump uh, so that you have less incidences of the pump cracking and therefore any type of leaking. And so with this new, what we call two-phase design, uh, we've seen great increases in consistency. So one of the biggest complaints that we receive and really a, quite a curious one was the issue of the BE52 cycling or surging. And this is a interesting issue because this is not a fault that we had when we sold the majority of units in other markets. We only really started seeing this issue when we started selling into the States. Now, this is related to the auto cutoff switch design that I talked about previously. But really, we started to see a lot of these incidences happening when people started retrofitting longer hoses onto the V52. Now, doesn't mean the V52 can't be used with a longer hose, but what we have understood now is that it basically, um, it reduces the allowable tolerance that the auto cutoff valve can operate in. Meaning, when you use a longer hose, sometimes it uh, it's harder for the pump to build up the required pressure to trigger the auto cutoff valve. As I talked about previously, the previous design of the auto cutoff valve could sometimes get a bit sticky, meaning you needed more and more pressure over time to activate it. So with a longer hose, sometimes the unit just couldn't get to that pressure. And that's why you'd have this issue of the unit surging or not going on and off and, the, and kind of the auto cutoff valve activating and then not activating and activating and not activating. So with the new design of the two phase auto cutoff valve and the fact that it's not as sensitive or not as um, dependent on call it the tight calibration of the springs and so forth, um, we've specifically engineered it so that when the V52 is used with a longer hose, you're not gonna get the cycling issues that we've had in the past. Now, again, not every V52 has had the cycling issues and thousands of customers have used the V52 with a longer hose, with no issue. But again, it's just talking about tolerances and the, um, call it the, the reducing the amount of 
um, cases that could happen with, call it, better engineering of certain components. I think really it is about the new auto cutoff valve. The objective for the auto cutoff valve is to reduce the um, peak pressure within the pump that activates the auto cutoff valve. So for the auto stop start function, when people release the trigger, pressure builds up in the pump, which should activate the auto cutoff valve, which then activates a micro switch, which shuts down the whole system. The old design, you could say, the auto cutoff valve was sticking and therefore was not um, you know, cutting off the, the, the unit or when used sometimes with the 50 foot hose, there wasn't suffi sufficient pressure building up, therefore the unit would surge and keep cycling because the auto cutoff valve wasn't working in the way that it was working. So the objective of course is we want to make sure the pressure within the pump stays at a reasonable level. In this case, it's under 2000 PSI. And under that level, it should activate the new auto cutoff switch, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, so let's show everybody how that works. You can see the peak pressure. Right. Let's go down the two under the 2000 PSA. So, I mean, it, you can see that the revised pump, we have uh, approximate working pressure or an average working pressure of 964 PSI. So obviously well within the range of calling it uh, working pressure of 1000 PSI, that was the objective. And the flow of this is at 1.93. And again, that's the average flow over the period that Ming was operating the device for. What you have show here is that the peak pressure is at 1996, so 1996, which is below kind of our 2000 PSI uh, objective. And what that really does is it limits the amount of pressure that uh, the pump will kind of run up to, which should help with longevity, um, which should help with uh, any surging issues, because again, you could basically say the valve is a lot more sensitive now and should be able to trigger the micro switch to shut the unit off and stop that surging problem that we have. So I think we're pretty happy with the performance of the unit. And now what we'll do is we'll take one of the returned units that we got um, from our customers and show you kind of the impact or what the peak pressure has built towards uh, during, the, uh, during the test. <laughs> You're lucky. So we've taken another unit from our returns auditing process. This one happens to be uh, one from our Canadian customer uh, under the Simonized brand. And it shows here at Corner Machine, uh, again, the performance is very consistent. So 950 PSI, 949 PSI, 1.92 flow. But when Ming pulled the trigger, stopped the trigger, we're up at 2,935 internal peak pressure. So I think the interesting thing to note about that is there's a thousand PSI difference in terms of the peak pressure built up in the unit um, before the auto cutoff valve worked. And that just shows kind of the inconsistency or variability in the previous design, which in this case we had almost 3000 PSI. In the previous case we had 2000 PSI. That's like a 50% difference. So what we wanted to do was really keep everything below 2000 and really close that gap and kind of shrink that difference so we have more consistent performance uh, as it related to the auto cutoff valve. When you do have a more consistent auto cutoff valve, you're gonna have uh, a more durable machine, you're gonna have less cycling when you're using uh, the unit with- No uh, crack on the pump. Hose. Pardon me? No oh, crack. No cracking on the pump because the pump is never getting up to those high pressures. So it's going to help the quality of the machine uh, by a lot by this. A relatively simple engineering change. Last but not least, some customers reported issues with their GFCI and not being responsive to when you press the on button. This was just a simple matter of changing uh, suppliers so we had a better supplier for the GFCI switch. There was nothing technical to change here, it was just a question of 
uh, a better supplier. So we think this will solve that issue and we'll keep a close eye on it. So what's the result of all of this testing? First thing we should say is that these changes and some of the changes have been implemented throughout the life cycle of the product. Meaning when we discovered the cause, we immediately put it in, into effect. And so the chances of getting a unit in reality of, with all these issues wrapped together is extremely low. So really it is from a product manufacturing and engineering point of view, this kind of continuous improvement and refinement of the product um, to get to a place where the product performs and meets the customer's expectation. And that's kind of what we've been doing. So the V52 today is a evolved version of the original one that we put out um, over a year ago. A lot of the findings, however, um, from this kind of audit process over the past few months has really informed our next generation of product, which is called the 2.0. Now, the 2.0 is a completely new design pump, uh, re-engineered in many ways. So we've taken obviously the learnings from the audit. We've also taken a lot of cues from other high-end pressure washes in the market and a lot of learnings on how they're able to be, uh, you know, how they're able to be reliable, how they're able to perform, what materials they use, what processes they use to build their pumps um, and how that all matches up with the motor. And we're really trying to introduce a next level above kind of a retail pressure washer that has um, at least double the life span of a typical DIY pressure washer. And when I mean typical DIY pressure washer, essentially any pressure washer that you'd find out at retail. So we want to double the effective life of that in addition to providing even more performance from a pressure and flow point of view. And we'll, get an, we'll do another video to go into detail about how we've been able to achieve those things. And you'll see that product on the market very soon. Thank you.